Hello, this is the first or first non-introductory lecture in this lecture series on general topology. And in this lecture, we're going to define a topological space, talk about neighborhoods of sets and point, uh, points and sets, and talk about interior, exterior, and boundary points of sets. So to start off, we're going to, in the introductory lecture, we talked about the real line and some interesting properties of it. And there were three that we decided were very important. And they were these. The first is that the union of open sets is open, where we defined open sets to be the union of open intervals. Two, the, that the finite intersection of open sets is open. And three, a set is open if and only if each point is interior. So this finite here, as we remember, was important because otherwise you, you, you get problems. It doesn't quite work out. And then this last interior, uh, interior one was a kind of characteriz characterization of what an open set is. So now we're going to generalize this to something called a topological space and a topology. And where they have these same two first properties, this third one comes about as a result of those other properties. So the definition is this. A topological space is a pair X and S for any set X, so we can take any set we want, and a collection of subsets of X called S, such that three particular properties hold. So if S has these three properties, and I'll explain them in a second, S is called a topology. And the elements of S are called open sets. So the important idea here is we're just, as long as it follows these three properties, we get to pick whatever S we want. We're declaring these sets to be open, as long as they follow these three properties. So the three properties are, first, if we have elements in S, their union is also an S. So the uh, union of open sets is open. That's that first idea here, the first property here. The second property is that if you have elements in S, the finite intersection of them is also an S. Again, the second property. The third property is that X, the set of everything, and the empty set are also an S. And as long as S follows those three properties, we call it a topology, and the things in it are open sets that we just de we decided or we declared these to be what we want to call open sets. So this is kind of an, a weird idea that it's kind of arbitrary. It's not based on some intrinsic properties of the space. And so let's go over a few examples. The first example is exactly what you would expect, the real line. So let give me a second. All right, example one, the real line. Here, we do exactly what we did before, where the things in S, SI, are unions of open intervals. And OK, let's make sure it follows these three, um, these three rules, these three properties, to make sure that this S is, in fact, a topology. So if we take these S sub i, which are unions of open intervals, each element, each open set is a union of open intervals. We take their union, and it's still uh, uh, a union of open intervals, which is what we talked about in the last lecture. The second one, that the finite intersections is still an open set. Again, the last lecture, we, we proved that, that it works out. The third one, since we defined R and the empty set to be open intervals, of course, those are also in our set. And so S, which is made up of all these SIs, which are unions of open intervals, is a, to a topology on the real line. And X with S, with S is a topological space. Now, an interesting property here is that you can think of open intervals as kind of the building blocks of everything else that is created here, all the other open sets. So we didn't call this, these open intervals, a basis for the topology, because everything else can be constructed off of those. All right, the second example, completely different. So here, we say X is the set A, B, C, and D. Just four elements, whatever they may be. And here we say S 
is the set of A, the set of B, the set of A and B, the set of A, B, C, and D, and of course, the empty set. So let's see if this S is a topology on X. So first we have to do unions are in S. Unions of open sets are open. So, well, okay, A union B is AB. B union AB is AB. AB union ABCD is ABCD, etc. You can see that all the combinations possible could work or will work. Second, finite intersections. Okay, a, B intersect, or a intersect B is the empty set. A, B intersect B is B, etc. You can see that that property will also work. And X and the empty set are in our topology. And so S is, in fact, a topology. So this example here is completely different this, than this example. This one used kind of familiar things that we're used to. Here we just declared these to be open sets, made sure it followed the properties. And then, well, that's kind of weird, right? OK, well, let's go to the third, the third example. Here, we set x equal to any set we want. And here, s is all subsets of x. OK, let's make sure this follows these three properties. One. Unions, unions. So, if we take any uh, any subset and we un uh, we union them together, put them together, it's still going to be a subset. So we're good. Same thing with intervals. If you take a number of subsets and you take their interval, it's still going to be a subset. So we're fine. And the third one, everything and the empty set are subsets of X, and so they're also in our topology. So S is a topology, but it's kind of a weird one. And we call it the discrete topology because you can think of every point having their own open set. Because every point is an open set because every point is a uh, subset of x. And that idea that a single point is an open set is also true in this last one, in example two. And it's kind of unusual, but it's not what you would think of because in the real line, single points were never open sets. Anyway, number four. The fourth example. Here, we use x equals r2. And this really works for r, any rn, right? But here what we're going to do is, it's a little harder to actually talk about what, what these things are. But here we're going to say um, basis of s is all open balls. To explain that, first of all, the basis is all the other open sets are the unions and intersections of these open balls. And so that's going to clearly satisfy 1 and 2 just by definition. That's what it means for it to be a basis. And the third one, well, you can think of the empty set as being the ball of nothing and the x um, being the ball of everything. But explain an open ball quick. An open ball is you take the circle or a ball in you know three dimensions or higher, but it doesn't include the boundary. It includes everything on the inside, but not the boundary, and that's what an open ball is. This is the usual topology, the standard topology, just like this was the standard topology of R. It's just the one that we're more intuitively familiar with, but it's not the only possible one. I mean, you could have this discrete topology on either of those two spaces. All right, number five. Um, here, let's look at this line, or array, from zero to infinity. And this is going to be our set x. So x equals zero to infinity. And here, we're going to let open set be the right part of the arrow for say, uh, for some d all the way up to infinity. So to write that out you know, more formally, s is the set d to infinity, where d is greater than 0. 
and its x and the empty set. Okay, so here let's make sure it follows these three properties again. The first, the union of these, uh, of these open sets. Well, if we take the two, two or more of these arrows and we take their union, it's always just going to be the leftmost of them. Uh, the leftmost of the intervals of the D. And so it's going to work out that it's another one of these D to infinity things. Um, the next one, finite intersections. If we take finite intersections, finite's important here, then you get um, the interval that is from the, the biggest of those Ds to infinity. If you have infinite, you can have a closed ray off to the right, which is not allowed. And so that's why finite here is very important. And the third one, that everything and nothing is in our S, well, we did that by definition. We declared those to be open. And so S is a topology. Um, and so open sets aren't like here. Open sets were like this piece here and this piece here, perhaps. This one is only right arrows, right rays. And so that's um, it's interesting because it's still a topology, but it's completely different. It behaves completely differently. All right. The last one we have is we take x, again, to be any set. And we declare S to be everything and the empty set. So let's make sure that this is a topology. Well, if we take unions of everythings or nothings, you're either going to get everything or nothing, so we're good. If you take their intersections, you again will get everything or nothing. So you're good. And it clearly follows the third property. So S is a topology. And this is kind of the opposite of this discrete topology we talked about. This is called the trivial topology because, well, there's only two elements. This is the smallest possible topology you could have because you, can't, you have to have at least these two sets, but it doesn't have any more. And so this is, uh, this is like the poorest topology. It's called the trivial topology. And usually, to be honest, it's not that good for much except for using counterexamples. Um, but it's still, an, it's still an interesting topology that follows our axioms, so it's important to consider. And so these are six excellent examples of topologies, and we'll go into more details in a second. One interesting thing here to talk about is here you have a, a topology that has lots and lots of open sets. Pretty much every, well, everything is an open set. Here you have the exact opposite. Virtually nothing is an open set. So you kind of get the idea of these like hierarchies, right? If you, they have lots of sub, uh, subsets, they're called um, rich topologies or large topologies, where this is called a poor or uh, a small topology. Sometimes, and so like this one is, might be the smallest, this one might be a medium one, and this one would be a large one. But sometimes they're, they're not compatible. Um, even though they're both open sets, they're not like, one isn't strictly kind of bigger, they're just different. Anyway, well, in the next lecture we'll talk about um, neighborhoods. And so thank you for listening to this one.